Good morning, Saturday the 15th of November 2014. A warm welcome along. My name's Chris Reardon and this is United Kingdom Talk, our weekly live, light-hearted talk show, darlings. Good morning. And uh, terrible news. There's so much in the news today. I've got loads of news stuff today. Uh, the, the little Comet probe thing, is it uh, Feely? Now, where do they come with that? Is it Feely? P-H-I-L-A-E. Where did they come out with that name? Feely. Feely. What an awful name. For a spaceship, don't you think? Anyway, the batteries have run out, boys and girls. Oh, no. I hope that doesn't happen while I'm doing my show today. The batteries have run out and it's gone into standby mode. Can you imagine if that happened to us? I mean, there's probably some people that you'd like it to happen to, isn't there? You know, you could be going along and you just say to this person, OK, go into standby. And it... Wouldn't that be fantastic? And maybe you'd have to push a button on their neck or somewhere like that. I'd like to do that to my best friend, Ron. You know, when he's really pissing me off. I'd say, OK, standby mode. <laughs> oh, he's already been around here this morning. Oh, yes, yes. So yesterday, he came out with some excuse. I don't know what it was, but he came over with a load of washing. This is my best mate. Sheets. Sheets. Oh, is it all right now? I, I got wise to it, you see. And I put the washing machine on before he got here. In the thinking that he'll get here and say, oh, it's on already. I'll take it home again. No, he waited. He waited in the living room. For it to finish. So then I took all my washing out, coloreds, hung them over my um, uh, banister at the top of the stairs because it's like bits of wood and you can hang various things over them. You mustn't put uh, washing, uh, uh, clean, wa uh, wet washing on radiators. Very important that you don't do that, boys and girls. They go rusty, as I have experienced. I've got two radiators gone rusty downstairs, the one in the kitchen and the one in the little utility room. And they're both radiators that I use to hang washing over. And I, t I told my best mate, I told him, I said, you mustn't hang washing. Oh, no, it'll be all right. Ah, there's virtually holes in them now, dear. Rust at the top and rust at the bottom. So they're coming to replace two new radiators on Monday, along with a few other bits and pieces. Yeah, so he came and, and he waited, he waited and he waited three hours for the washing machine to finish and then loaded it up with his skanky sheets. Awful, dear. Awful. And then he put so many in, you know. I mean, the washing machine was so heavy, it started drilling itself into the floor when it was spinning round. OK, so he was supposed to come over last night, but unfortunately, he hasn't got my keys at the moment. Tom. The builder has got the keys at the moment. He's the one that redid my toilet last week. Oh, the toilet's lovely now. You must come and use it. Actually, no, don't. I don't like people using my toilet. Please do not come and use my toilet. It's like a new house, that toilet. It's like a little house all on its own, my toilet. It's all red and white with a new, um, with a new, uh, 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 new little, little side basin on the side and chrome pipes. Chrome pipes, dear. Christ, they were about 25 quid each. Oh, good morning, Terry H. Terry H says, hanging washing on radiators also also causes damp. Yes, it does. You must leave a window open if you're going to do it. I know that, Terry, yes. But it makes your radiators rust. Did you know that? Oh, so my best mate. Oh, no, no, it don't. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Oh, he knows it all, doesn't he? He knows it all. No, don't worry. The radiators won't rust. They have already. Are you blind? Yeah, but that wasn't caused by the wet, wet rushing. You know, the fact that there are no other radiators in the house, rusty, other than the two that I put clothes on, you know, that doesn't get into his thick head. That that might just be the cause of it. Oh, no, no, no. Coincidence. Do not hang wet things on radiators, my darlings, all right? So then he loaded up all his stuff, you know, the washing machine sank down two foot into the ground and he switched it on. And he said he was just going to rinse stuff through. Well, ha! Huh, then I came down and said, then he said goodbye. And I thought, he's, he's gone out the door quite quickly. And I came downstairs. And what? And what do you think was on my kitchen table? An empty box of fairy snow washing up powder. 
And I thought, that wasn't empty when I left it up there a little while ago. So, I grabbed it and rushed out the door. I rushed, oi, oi! And he, th he was reversing and he was pretending not to hear me. I could see it. He was, oh, oi, oi! And uh, as, he, as he's gone backwards to, to do his, you know, his 10 point turn, because he's not a very good driver, I banged on the window. Oi! And he opened the window. I said, what's this? He said, what? I said, the box is empty. Oh, there was only a little bit in it. Might have been only a little bit to you. I could have got two or three washes out of that. God's sake. Empty. Completely and totally empty. I said, I thought you were just going to rinse it through. He said he said he was going to just rinse it through. And then he'd be... Got, no, he's got a, a wash. And on 40 degrees, using my electricity. 40 degrees, dear. I had to turn everything else off just to save what he was using. And then he just drives off to his boyfriend. Left alone as usual. Terrible state of affairs. Really is. Fortunately, I had another box of washing up powder. I had to dispose of that in the recycle cardboard thing outside. Yes. So that was that. He's already been around this morning to collect his washing. So he rings up this morning. Oh, um, because he couldn't collect his washing last night because he didn't have the keys, as I just told you. He said, I'll pop round this morning and collect it. Oh, that's all well and good. Don't mind. He was at the post office collecting something from the post office. And uh, he comes round. Uh, no, before he go, he said, oh, can you can you smell the washing? And I thought, I don't want to go and put my nose in that washing machine. You smell your skanky sheets. Thank you very much. I said, why do you want me to smell it? He said, well, it's been in there all night. So that would be about 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It's been in the washing machine about 18 hours. You know, still slightly damp. Oh, could you give it another rinse through? Because it has smell. Well, it's clean washing. Clean washing. Why, why would you want to rinse it again? Honestly, I don't know, I understand it. I really don't understand it. So he, <laughs> so I click, quickly put my own sheets in after taking his out so, um, and switched it on before he got here to collect them. <laughs> I'm not having my thing whirring around permanently doing his washing. What a blooming cheek. Now you can join in this morning if you want to, boys and girls, if you want to give us a call in. Be nice to hear from you. Hear from someone, for God's sake. Uh, the uh, let me just bring up the things. If you're watching the show live, oh, where has that gone now? There it is. There. Uh, and effects. Text over video. Oh, it's gone again. That, why does that keep disappearing? I keep losing. I don't think that's going to work, is it? Uh, maybe. Maybe that won't work. I don't know. Text enable text. No. Is that not happening? No, not happening. Never mind. We'll have to we'll have to do without that today. No text over video. Or is it? Oh, one minute, one minute, one minute. Text over video. Oh. Nothing's working. Okay. So if you'd like to call in this morning, you can Skype in. My Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon. C H R I S R E A R D O N. Okay. C H R I S R E A R D O N. Or you can call in on the local London number, 020 8133 6358. 020 8133 6358. Good morning, Kieran. And uh, Kieran wants to know doesn't his boyfriend have a washer? The cheek of it. Oh no, the boyfriend lives with a mother, dear. Boyfriend lives with a 27 years old, still living with mum. Don't like to pay out, that's the problem. That's the problem with all you youngsters. You don't want to pay out anything, do you? I was gone at 21, married at 21. Then I left and I was back at 21 as well. <laughs> oh, it didn't last very long, my marriage. No, I'm afraid not. So then I lived at mum for a while. And then uh, a few years passed and I bought a flat. I think it was 20, 23. 23. Saved up the money, put down a deposit on a flat. Not, not a large uh, sum of money, really, in those days. And um, and that was it. I was out at 23. I think mum and dad were, were disappointed to see me go, though. They were disappointed. I should have stayed a bit longer in hindsight. But honestly, 27, still living with his mum. And when he's not round there, he's shacked up with Ronnie. Terrible state of affairs, really. Coming round and doing mum. I'm surprised he doesn't appear every day with her, but the, his washing machine is permanently on. Honestly, 
round and round it goes, round and round, more water, more electricity. And he put sheets in, and if they're not sparkling white, not the sheets, other white items, if they're not spark, you know what I mean by sparkling white, if they're not sparkling white, he puts them in again, on boil wash. My God, all that electricity. What a terrible thing. Uh, Terry H says, I tried to ring in last week. No answer. I don't know why I bothered. Did you really? We'll try and ring in now and I'll answer you. God's sake. Moan, 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 people. People are having a little moan today, aren't they? I'm glad I don't moan. I'm not a moaner, as you know. I don't like complaining at all about things. Kieran says, uh, got to pay off his spanking new Audi. That's why. Oh, he's not got an Audi. He's got a BMW, dear. He's got a lovely blue BMW. It's really nice. I have ordered my new car this week, Kieran. Have you been watching my little videos? Yes. It is time. My two years are up. And it's time to purchase. Well, I don't, I don't purchase. I get it. Is it called P&P? P-N-P. You know, where you, you put a deposit down. And then you keep paying so much a month. And then at the end of that period, then you hand the car back. They value it, give you a bit more off the next one, then you put another smaller deposit down, and then get a new car. That that that's how I do it now. It's a lot easier. You don't have, don't have such a large payout all the time, you know. Ah, oh, now what have we got here? Let me have. Kieran says, "Oh yes, Kieran, I've just just read that." Come on, Terry, if you want to call in today, then feel free to call in. Tell me if my uh, I'm very excited about my new boiler. I say excited, excited and a little bit sort of, oh, you know, I've got people come in to disrupt the house for two days. Do you know what I mean? I can't be doing with it. I really can't. And they'll be banging away. And as you know, I like to have a couple of hours sleep in the afternoon. And that will interfere with my sleeping sessions. Bang, bang, bang. Taking a boiler out, putting a new boiler in, putting a hole in the roof for the... I don't know what it is, that tube thing that that steam comes out of. What's that called? Is it a flu? Is it a flu, Terry? Terry, you could have come and done my boiler, couldn't you? I wouldn't have hurt you. Eh? Oh, and I've been to Toys R Us this week to get a few Christmas presents. Would you like to see them? I've got them here. Would you like to see them? Now, I must say, if nieces and nephews are watching, then cover your children's ears and eyes while I just show the millions of people watching this show today my little gifts. Are you ready? So this... This is for... This is for great-nephew... Harry. It is a bus... Ah, ah, ah. I love it. And it's got letters on it. Listen, look, look, look. Let me just turn it on. Let's roll. Time for fun. Time for fun. Ride, ride, ride the bus. <laughs> I love it. And you, if you press the buttons, listen, listen. There's there's numbers. Five. Six. So our phone number is. Ten. Oh, it hasn't got O on it. Hang on. Oh. Off. Two. Octopus. Begins with Oats no. no. Shut up! Shut up! Oh, what's that on the side there? Time to learn challenge time. Phonics. Let's count all the cards. The next stop. I love it! I love it! Don't you love it? I want to get one of these for myself. So that's for <laughs> that's for great nephew Harry. I have something here for. Great niece Evie, it is a little smart laptop. I wonder if I can turn this one on. No, I must have a, oh, there's a button there, one minute. Let's get connected. That's the same voice as on the bus, isn't it? Marty Boys, C, 
Picture dictionary. Oh, it's got a pi got a piano. Look. W O P Q Message it mute use the M. Thank you. Bye bye, smarty boys. Bye bye, little smart top. For age one and a half to four years. I was very very clever looking at the ages for these things. And um and this one here for Evie. Right? Is there a button on this one somewhere? I don't know. What's that really? No. No, my hidden button. That my button might be on the back. Oh, that. What's that? One minute. Here we are. Hush, little baby. It's time to rest. Dreamland is near. Quiet time is here. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Where's? It? Oh, let me turn it off again. I don't want to do the batteries. Uh, I also have downstairs, but it's a little bit big to bring up. A little drum set. I have a drum set for. Um, uh, great nephew George that I really annoy my niece that will set that drum set up and he'd be banging away it's only a little one for, for little people he's nearly two he is and also a nice bag for my niece Ted Baker bag oh I love the smell and that's for my niece and that's that's as far as I've got so far so there we are we have members of the family and a nice little Christmas presents, boys and girls. Oh, Uncle Chris. Uncle Chris loves you all. Uh, Terry says, can't ring in today. Got to take, uh, got to leave soon to help my brother with his garden. Oh, yeah, dig that garden. I can't tell. Can you, can you lift a shovel, don't that, do you? Can you lift a spade up? Bit heavy for you, isn't it, Terry? Uh, I can't install boilers. I'm an office girl, as you both reminded me last week, but no technical information. Good afternoon. Hello, my name's my name's Terry. Technical help. How may I help you with your inquiry? I like that, Terry. Office girl. Yes. Anyway, let's go back to the Comet story, boys and girls. How fantastic that we were able, not us, but the scientists, were able to land this tiny little landing craft thing on the Comet last week. But, but, it can't see the sun. Very disappointed. It's landed in such a way because it bounced, bounced a couple of times, and it's landed on its side with one leg in the air. You know. One leg in the air. I can imagine Terry's like that after he's been out a night on the old drink, don't you? Eh? I can imagine you just laying in the gutter somewhere with a leg in the air. Anyway, it says the history making craft has now gone to sleep after its batteries ran down to a dangerous level. But before it went into standby, it sent a deluge of information back to Earth. <coughs> so today, boys and girls, before I go into standby, I will be sending you a deluge, a deluge of information to your computer screens and Internet devices. Isn't that kind of me? But in that shame... Ten years they've been sending that. It's been racing through space ten years. And right on the last thing, it's kind of tripped up. I, I, th I thought I saw somewhere they were going to try and push it back up again by using the drill or something like that. But now that I think they've got to wait for it to wake up again. But, but it's going towards the sun. Now, at some point, it will get too hot and it, it will melt. This little spaceship will be destroyed by the sun. They know that's going to happen. Uh, so they're hoping that they, it can get enough sun before it melts to do some more little experiments and things like that. But I just think it's totally amazing, absolutely amazing, when you see on the news stories and all that, these high-definition pictures of what is another... Pl it's, it's almost like another planet, isn't it? I know it's only an old rock hurtling from... But how fascinating to be able to see high-definition pictures, which I could, you know... The quality of which I couldn't take on my um, on my uh, camera over there. I just think it's totally amazing to see another world like that. I wonder what they'll find out. There has been a couple of um, conspiracy theories that it is actually a spaceship from outer space with living beings inside. It could be, I don't know. Looks a bit more like a rock to me powdery surface just totally and utterly fascinating it really is so uh that's the comet story um 
Oh yes, uh, the Daily Express are at it again, boys and girls. Have you seen their latest, their latest um, horrific weather forecast? Oh yes, and once again, written by my dear friend Nathan Rayo, who used to come clubbing at somewhere where I was DJing. He's now quite high up in the Daily Express, I believe. Check out his latest weather forecast. A freak series of rare atmospheric events is set to plunge Britain into the worst winter of modern times. Haven't we heard this before? The worst winter of modern times with heavy snow paralysing the entire country within weeks. We had this last year, dear. And the year before. Shocked forecasters. <laughs> what? What does a shocked forecaster look like? Come on. <laughs> can, can you see them? Can you see them when they're standing in front of those maps? Yeah, and, and they pick up, I don't know, they, they, oh, it's, well, it's not anymore. They've just got this little clicker thing. And they click a thing and this, this I don't know, one of the forecasters, and they go, <gasps> <laughs> especially that gay one, Thomas. Always oh, a bit campy, is that one, and he, Thomas. I like the old bird. There's an old bird on there doing the um the weather. I quite like uh, Thomas. Oh, he's always pristine and immaculate, isn't it? In that little tight suit he wears and the tie. His cheeky little smile. I think it's Thomas. Is he the gay one? <laughs> he he doesn't give us weather forecasts like this, Nathan. I'd love to see you on the BBC weather forecast, giving us a shocked weather forecast. <laughs> shocked forecasters warn tonight the latest high-tech weather models point to a catastrophic big freeze in late this year with three months of blizzards and Arctic gales. Where? Where are the blizzards and Arctic gales then? Go on, tell me. Go on, say it. They're coming. I bet they are. I bet they're coming. They're not coming, are they? Maybe in the highlands of Scotland, where there's lots of sheep. Nice woolly sheep. Kieran says, do you mean Thomas Schmaffmaker? Is that his name? Is he Polish or something? Where's he from then? Thomas, that's the one. Is he the gay one? He's very pretty, isn't he? Do you think he'd like to come into the studio and do one for me? A weather forecast, I meant. <laughs> it carries on. They fear a lethal and unprecedented combination of low pressure, above average rainfall and a freak polar vortex. <laughs> will come together in a perfect storm of misery for winter 2014. A perfect storm of misery. I mean, I couldn't be more miserable than I am now. How miserable can one be? I'm miserable now. <laughs> it means a dramatic... Oh, here is Most air... From this is from the Daily Express. Most air from the Atlantic currently causing the mild, wet and windy weather threatens to collide with bitter Arctic winds. <laughs> It'd be like on those TV shows, you know, like Scott of the Antarctic when he's in that tent. I may go out for a while. It means a dramatic plunge in the current mild temperatures. And I must say, it has been mild. I haven't worn, I've rarely worn a coat at the moment. Last night I finished a little job in uh, King's Cross in London. Come out there at two o'clock, I just had this on. That's all I had on. I haven't got, there's no t shirt. Oh, I'm naked underneath this. Naked, would you like to see a little bit of flesh? Is that doing anything? For... No, I didn't think it was. <sighs> a dramatic plunge in the current mild temperatures will turn torrential rain into blizzards capable of smothering the entire country. That's in capital letters. In feet drift, dr deep snow drifts. What planet is this boy on? The big chill could arrive as early as this month, although some models show the colder flow of air will be held at bay until the new year. So see, see, so he starts off <coughs> telling us that it's just round the corner. Now, where was it? You know, at the, uh, uh, in November. Now, where's it set? Now, just a minute. Let me go back a bit. 
within weeks. Uh, where is it now? But, but, a minute, one minute. Bumps. Oh, he doesn't say, does it? Worst way to find moment in time. Within weeks. Oh, I see what he's done there. Now, in my mind, you know, you would think weeks. You'd think to yourself, oh, you know, next week. Oh, no, no. Now he's telling us it won't be until the new year. Still time to book that summer, that winter holiday, boys and girls. Yes. <laughs> however, he says, the big chill. Um, <clears throat> however, when it arrives, it threatens to rival the historic winter of 1947. Who was here? I oh, wasn't here. When snow fell every single day between January and March, crippling snowdrifts of up to five metres ground swathes of the country to a standstill while the armed service were drafted in to drop emergency air supplies at stranded communities. I mean, I would have to have that here. Emerge, I might, maybe I should immediately start filling up my cupboard with things for these dark, dark winter times ahead, boys and girls. Oh, Nathan, dear. I wonder if you'll ever have a 95% correct weather forecast, lovey. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, you can just see people now in, in, I don't know, libraries and pubs discussing this, can't you? You say, oh, 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 no, really? Oh, no, Beryl. Really, Beryl? Oh, my God, look how cold it's going to be. Oh, dear. Well, not for me. My new heating system's coming Monday and Tuesday. Well, I don't know why I'm excited. Oh, now something's just popped up on my on my thing. It's, it says an unknown PC or device has been detected connecting to my system. How do I know about that then? Um, seven, that one there, that one. Well, where is it? Where is it then? Where is it then? Online. What is that thing? One nine two. What is that? I don't know what that is. It's an unknown device. It says an unknown device is connected to my system. What does it mean? One nine two one six eight zero oh, one six. What would that be? Is that my router? One nine two one six eight zero. Oh, what's that then? Oh, it's my router. I don't know what that is. What should I do? Should I, should I block it? We might all suddenly go off the air then, mightn't we? I don't know what that is. So I've got that computer, that computer, and my mobile. Could it be my mobile phone? Don't know. Don't know. Oh, we got just someone just tried to call. Bruce, I just missed you. Would you like to call in again, Bruce? And I'll have a little chat with you, Bruce. Was you on phone or Skype? I'm not sure. Uh, let me just send him a little message. Now, where's Bruce? Let's have a quick look. Bruce is in Palmer, Palmerston North, New Zealand. Oh, well, now there's a country I haven't been yet. <coughs> I've been just down the road in Australia, but I've never yet been to, um, uh, to uh, New Zealand. Let's see if I can give him a little call. Uh, call... Not quite sure how that works. There we are. Let's see what he wants to chat about. Turn off the video. There we are. Good morning, Bruce. Chris. Good morning, Bruce. Is that Bruce? That's right. Hello, sir. How are you? Good, thank you. It's half past one here in New Zealand. What are you I still? You, in, you should still be. You, you should be in bed, Bruce. What sort of time That's is right. this? I, I, it's half past one in the morning here. Gosh, yes. But uh, I often stay up late and have a snooze during the day. Oh, do you? So welcome yeah, along, Bruce. Your, I can't see your picture. Have you got your video turned off? Uh, I turn off the video when I'm doing uh, the show because it uses a little bit too much bandwidth, yes. Because okay. there's kind of a lot going out and a lot coming in again. If that's all, we'll just have a little audio chat, Bruce, if that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. Can you see me? No, no, I've got you off as well. Um, okay. so, as, so as to conserve on that. Why don't, you try, why don't we try it with a little bit of low quality video so we can, at least we see each other? Uh, the people watching the show won't be able to see. That's the trouble. Okay. All right. So what do you do, Bruce? Whereabouts are you in New Zealand? I've never been there. 
Well, it's okay. New Zealand's two little islands. The top one looks like a fish, and I'm in about the middle of that fish. Okay. In a place called Palmerston North. Palmerston North. It sounds lovely. Well, it's, it's an English name. It's, a, it's some of the lords of a long time ago in, in the UK. Yes. And it was named after one of those guys. All right, yes. But anyway, I'm a, I was a technical writer. I'm sort of retired now. Yes. But uh, I was a technical writer. I was in IT and telecommunications and computing and all that sort of stuff. And I'm still heavy into high tech now. What it about did. you? What's your background? My background, well, I was, um, when I left school, uh, I worked in a supermarket. Then I became a British telecom engineer. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Who with? The telephone exchanges? Uh, no, no. I was out on the roads, in and out of people's houses and up and down telegraph Line. poles. I okay, looked you're after... in the lights. Yeah. I looked after the pair of wires coming from the telephone back to the top of the pole. That that was my job. Okay. I, I loved was in it. The exchange. I I can remember rotary, step by step, crossbar, yeah. and stored control, yes. all that stuff. Yes, yes. If I can just tell people <laughs> what what he's talking about is inside a telephone exchange. Um, before it was electronic, it was uh, 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 masses amounts of sh machinery in large buildings, and you would dial a number. So if you dialed a naught, this this thing would shoot up and it would go click 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 like that. Right now, yeah, well, if you went in the exchange at like I don't know six or seven o'clock in the morning, it was relatively quiet, and you now and again you'd hear a like that. Right. Come nine o'clock, all the business is open and it was really noisy in there. It was right. ever so noisy. You've got all these clicks going on. You can remember that, can't you? I've lost 40% of my hearing in the left eye, uh, ear and 20% in the right ear. Are you, do you put it down to that, do you? Well, it's riding motorbikes in the wind. That was another uh, thing. And playing, playing banjo and concertina and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah all that. Did, did, you know when you were in the in the exchange? Did you ever yeah. put Did you ever put your hand in without having that glove on and get electrocuted? <laughs> many many a time, but it was only fifty <laughs> volts. Yeah, and the the, the um, ringing current was about one hundred and eighty. That's right. Yeah. Very spiky. Had a very spiky sort of a waveform to it, so <clears> you'd feel that. But none of it was really dangerous. No, not dangerous. But if you you know you could be having you could have your hand in there doing something, no glove on the back, and then someone would ring, and then you you'd yeah. snatch <laughs> your hand back, and the damage you'd do was because your hand had gone up and scratched along something else. That was yeah. where the damage was. <laughs> yeah, I remember that very well, and it would make you sweat more. <laughs> You could sweat, and then you'd make a better contact next time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so true. How fantastic to be speaking to someone who's done all this as well. Did you ever work outside at all, Bruce? Um, not really. You mean for telecom? Right. I mean, I've I've done my own wiring of my house. Yes. I, I mean, it's just two wires here, and I wired my house with a two pairs for every room. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've done it for that, but I haven't worked. I haven't done lines work outside. Okay. My time was, it was all inside the telephone exchanges, and then I went to head office because they had an interesting position coming up. It was called research and development, and I, and that was about nineteen eighty. Yeah, uh, nineteen. Yeah, about nineteen eighty when um, I got very excited because all the so-called digital stuff came out, and I was fascinated by yes. that. Yes, System X. So I got into that. You remember System Sorry? X? System X. Is that stored program control, was it? Oh, don't know. It's sort, uh, of, it's sort of electronic telephone exchange. Yeah, electric. It was one of the first, I think there was Syst... Oh, what was... There was one before System X. Oh, I can't remember now. Cross, it was crossbar. crossbar. Maybe it's crossbar. Wasn't... Isn't that analog crossbar? Uh, I think, yeah, it was. That's right. There was System... Oh, I can't remember now. But I think it came from Sweden. I'm sure it came from Sweden, this, this, this new electronic exchange. And, of course, okay. they started moving us all over to those, and these, these enormous rooms became redundant, and you just had a few, right. you know, little boxes in the corner of the room. Yeah, it was amazing, right. and we were just totally blown away by all this new equipment. Yeah, yeah. but so I knew that digital was coming, and I, I, I got a little book on digital technology. I just loved the idea of digital. Yes. And... Um, the idea, for example, of pristine quality of 
sound mm. because you simply all you had to know was there was a pulse there or there wasn't a pulse. Yeah. And you could regenerate it and by the time it got to Japan it was still perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had digital CDs and all of that was a huge, huge, wonderful oh, yeah. revolution. Yeah. Well after I left um British Telecom I, I, I what what I was doing, I was DJing as well as working for um British Telecom. And I got so busy with that, I had to make a decision what I wanted to do. And I went along with the DJ and I left British Telecom. And um, so I've been doing DJing and karaoke nights and quiz nights. And that, that's what okay. I do now. Yeah. And I'm still, okay. I'm 51 now. And I'm still lucky enough to be working most nights, almost every night of the week except Wednesday. Very good. Yeah. Very good. I'm 65. Oh, you and don't. When you get to 65, when you get to 65, they give you, I'm, I'm living on. They give me three hundred and thirty New Zealand dollars, which is about half as many pounds right. per week. And that with well, two two flatmates living in rooms of my house, I can live okay on that. I'm earning about what you'd call a thousand pounds per month. Okay. And I don't have a car, so I live I live a modest life like that. But it's a very good life, complete freedom. I can recommend retirement. It's totally wonderful. I I just find so much to do. You know, on the yeah, occasions right. where where I have had a bit of a lull in work, you know, I haven't, yeah. you know, I haven't sort of sat down and watched the television all the time. I still find so much to do. For example, this, you know, this isn't my yeah, job. Right, right, right. I, I just love doing this and, and talking to people. Yeah. Now, do you do live? Because I looked at you on uh, Google Hangouts Live and I could see you talking there and I was trying to figure out whether it was live or not. Yes, this is live, yeah. Uh, but are you also doing it simultaneously on Google Plus? Yes. Okay, so people can see you talking to me. No, that they can see me, but they can't see you. Uh, the, okay, but they can see you talking to me. Yes, they can see me talking to you, but they can't see okay, you. Okay, right. Yeah. How many people do you get watching you? Do you think? Oh, not many. Not many. Uh, okay. Only only a handful of people watch the live yeah. show. Okay. Um, can, can they? Could they, if they wanted to, post you a question right now? Um, you mean because if you're going Google, if you're going Google Hangout Live, yeah, it's being broadcast simultaneously on YouTube, yes. and they should be able to post you a message, which you should be able to respond to. I don't know. Okay, can don't. you see yourself? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull you up on YouTube, and I'm going to see if I can post you a message right. while we talk. Because I'm very interested in these Hangouts Live. I've been running one about every oh, Sunday. Ah, well, the, the thing yeah. is, after I've finished the show, which is usually about one o'clock in about 20 minutes' time, um, yeah. I then... What, I, I, I'm talking to... There's two cameras in front of me. There's the webcam, oh. which is what you're watching yeah. me on, OK? There's also a better quality camera recording the whole show, and they're both ones on top of the other right in front of me there, all right? Yeah. Now, which means... I, I and I record the sound separately on another computer. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. Google Hangouts have got a thing on there where you can kind of bring up people's pictures as they call in live, and you can have the video as well. The only problem with right. that is the other camera that's recording the show in HD for later cannot see yeah. that. So that's why I don't use that facility, and I have call-ins like you are now, either Skype or yeah. or phone in, and but yeah. but not with the video, and that that's the reason why. Okay. But I can mm. see uh, yeah, if, I, if people put messages on I'm there, I can read them out. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get to you on the live thing. See, I find I would like to be able to keyword search yeah. to find out. Yeah. Who's live right now and what the topic is? I'd like to be able to say, I want to talk about dogs. For dogs in there, okay, here's three people, and you can join them by clicking here. Right. Because I don't think it's sociable enough. It's very, very good. I love the Hangouts. Yeah. But it has to be prearranged with people you know, unless you've rigged it up the way you've done it. And I got to you this way, and we could be talking Skype. But we should, yeah. we should have, I should have been able to click a button saying, please, can I come in? And I should have been able to join you, and we should have been visible both on that with decent broadband you know right no that would oh, be good not, not but i'm sure grateful that for works. what we've got yeah i'm just going to see if i can find you now okay go on you see, 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 if, see if that works and we'll have a little go there meanwhile let me just out, read out a couple of messages uh, good morning to daniel in camberley he's with us this morning he's late this morning good morning daniel hope you're well 
Nice to have you, sir. Uh, I've got me heating going on in next week. I'm just telling Daniel because he's a, a plumber as well. They're coming to do it on Monday and Tuesday. I hope they're not going to make much mess. They've got to move the boiler from downstairs to upstairs in a cupboard. And then I'll have all the space downstairs, Daniel. I'm very excited. Excited, but not looking forward to all the mess everywhere. And uh, good morning to Rick Porter. He's in Pittsburgh. Good morning, Rick. Nice to hear from you, sir. Who says, let me tell you how cold it got last winter. You you feel free to tell us how cold it got last winter. Go on, Rick. Um, were you the one, were you in the polar vortex? Because I know a lot of the states were in the polar vortex last um, year, weren't they? Certainly, even Florida. When I took my nephew on um, holiday to Florida last year, um... It, it wasn't, don't get me wrong, it wasn't freezing cold. However, there were a couple of cold days where we had to put coats on. And the, what do you call Florida people? Florodians? The Florodians um, said it was very unusual for it to ever get that cold. Even when I went to see Barry Manilow on the, uh, at the, um, where was he playing now? Oh, gosh. Uh, somewhere in town. Can't remember now. Uh, when I went to see him, um, he he came on the stage and said, "What's what's happened to the weather in Florida?" And it was cold. Do you get do you get very cold weather in um, New Zealand, Bruce? It, it's pretty moderate. New Zealand is called semi tropical, subtropical, semi tropical, semi tropical. Yeah, but I mean, out in some patches in New Zealand on the South Island, we yeah. get snow on the hills and occasionally on the ground, but yeah. it's not bad, you know. Right. And it goes to it goes to minus maybe five at worst in some small isolated areas, and it might go up to about say thirty, thirty two on a very, very hot day right. in some okay. towns in the hottest summer days. Oh, but sim- pretty moderate. Similar to us, really, then, Bruce. Yeah, I think England gets a bit yeah. cold. I lived in England. I lived in London for about six months, a long time ago. Right. And um, I mean, I think Scotland gets a lot colder. And even you get snow in London. Um, we didn't have any at all last year. Um, it was a very mild yeah. winter, and so far this year, it's also been very mild. I've rarely had the heating on. Rarely had okay. it on at all. The closest I've ever been to New Zealand is Norfolk Island. You know it. Yeah. yeah. What a yeah. beautiful place. Yeah, right. Um, and it's kind of in between you and Sydney, I think it is. Right. Have you ever been there? Norfolk Island? Uh, no, I haven't. South- I've been to Australia, so I just flew past it. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, well, it's, I mean, it's tiny. But, I mean, it, it, it really is very nice there. Uh, they haven't got any of the Australian nasties, you know, the spiders or, or anything like right. that. Um, and yeah. it's a beautiful place if you ever want to go there, you know, for a, for a quiet holiday. Is it quiet where you are? Are you in the country or in a town? I'm, I'm mm-hmm. in a... My, <laughs> Palmerston North has got a population of 80,000 people. It's a agricultural rural town. Right. It's sort of... It's in the middle of the country. It's not... It's, it's a half an hour drive from the sea. New Zealand's pretty small, so you, you're never that far from the sea. But um, this is a rural town. I like Palmerston North. It's a bit slow. I mean, I've lived in Montreal and London and, you know, Toronto and places like that. But yes. this is small. But it's a nice place. I can jog. Tomorrow morning, I'll go for a jog. And in 15 minutes, I'll be looking at cows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like... If I, when I was living in Toronto, if I wanted to go and see cows, I would have had to get in a bus or a truck or something and go right. for about 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But here I can jog there in about 10, 15 minutes. All right, yeah, yeah. I used to do jogging, but um, it started affecting my knees. So I, I do cycling oh, yeah. and swimming now. i tell you what, I've got my eye on. Um, have you seen those electric bikes? I had an electric bike for a while. And how, how did you get on with that? I didn't buy a good one, but I do like them. Um, I, if you, I think you paid, say, £1,000 for a that, decent one. That's right, yeah. I, I, think, know, that, I, 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 I think you'd I, love it. How uh, hilly is the area you're going to be cycling in? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's, 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 it's not too bad, but I've recently been to Israel, yeah. and in Tel Aviv, it, it seems to be a, a really popular way of getting around. Now, we have a lot of bikes in London, but I've never, ever seen an electric bike. In Tel Aviv, right. there was, lo- I would say... 60 70 percent of the people that had bikes they were electric and they were just whizzing oh. along you know about i don't know about 10. yeah right, right. fantastic yeah, it was great absolutely oh, no. I, I was amused sometimes that cars would look 
sort of surprised at me because I could go so fast. Yeah. They weren't used to catching bicycles going that fast. They didn't realize they had a motor. So I was just about overtaking them sometimes. On the other um, hand, it, it, it may well make you, make you a bit lazy. Well, I think, see, I, I, yeah, I, I've been tempted to get another one, but I need the exercise. This mm. town is very flat. Yeah. And, and I found London, I, I cycled to and from work for six months in London with no trouble on an ordinary push bike yes. around Hyde Park Corner. It's deadly, though. That's, that's a whirlpool of traffic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dreadful. Right. I remember one time there was this guy, and, and like it's about four lanes going around Hyde Park Corner. That's right, yeah. And um, yeah. I remember a guy cut me off, a little little pickup truck cut me off, and I knew that he would think he'd killed me. And, yeah. he, and I, sure enough, he looked in his rear view mirror at me to what? check whether I was dead or not. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I was so angry, I gave him the fingers in the mirror and I saw him stiffen, yeah. you know, with rage. Yeah. Anyway, the, as it happened, the traffic all sort of slowed down and mixed up again and I, to my embarrassment, I ended up right beside him. <laughs> and he leaned out the window and said, you, my, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was so mad that, that I'd been in the traffic and, you know. Well, what they've tried, to, very, do, what they've tried to do... Um, in London is put these uh, what they call the super highway in which is basically uh, they, they've moved the road they've, they've made the road for the traffic small, uh, narrower and yeah. put in these cycle lanes the problem is oh, yeah. there is no physical barrier between the bikes and the cars so right, you know right. I mean, and you've seen these idiots texting at the, the wheel and when they text yeah. at the wheel, they, they'll either drift over to the left or to the right. You know, and if they drift yeah. over to the left, well, that could, that's a cyclist dead. And there needs right. to be some sort of physical barrier between the cyclists and the cars. Um, Do you know what? The, there's going to be a new kind of barrier, speaking of that. You've heard of 3D printing? Yes. Okay, there's, everybody's going to be printing 3D printing metal gum. And after oh, yeah, that, the cars yeah, are going to be yeah. very respectful. Are you allowed those in, in New Zealand? No, we're not. No, we're not allowed them here. Must We've say... got the same attitude to the British, as far as guns are concerned. All the cops, the Cops Association recently voted unanimously, after a particularly bad incident where a cop was killed, yeah. that we all get guns, but the public doesn't want it. So no, the cops, no. although they wanted it, didn't get it. I think it's the They do have think... guns in their cars. Like, they think... can pull a gun out of They can pull a rifle out of their can or even a Glock handgun yeah. out of their car if they really need it. But they're not allowed to wear it on their hip all the time the way the Yanks do. Yeah. No, no, I don't, I don't have them here either. No, I, I, mm. I, don't think we, I don't think the public should be allowed to just go out and buy a gun. A couple of messages, Gus. Going, Good morning to Jimmy. Nephew Jimmy is there this morning. Good morning, Jimmy. Just back from work there. Um, maybe I should. Well, how, how do you fancy that, Jimmy? An electric bike. Electric bike. I thought they'd be about three of. I have seen some for three or four hundred pounds. Um, presumably, they're not very good, Bruce. I would say it's worth. Don't get as many. Get as much power as you can. Mine was two hundred and fifty watts of power. Right. If you can go to three fifty, I'm not sure what the law allows there. But get as much as you can, right. and also get as grunty a battery as you can. Right, okay. And, and also get one that's powered on the back wheel, not on the front. Because if you've got a giant uh, motor on the front wheel, the way I did, when you turn that wheel at speed, you get that centripetal effect, which messes up your steering a bit. Oh, really? So you want a, a, back, a back motor, back drive. Right. Yeah, back drive, okay. Yeah. Um, Rick says uh, a couple of days uh, when it was cold in Pittsburgh uh, they pretty much closed the city down nights went down to about minus 20 Fahrenheit I don't know what that is that's, that, that's very low isn't it 20 that's Fahrenheit that's going to be minus 20 Fahrenheit yeah Fahrenheit see Fahrenheit that's, that's uh, th zero is round what is it the, the Zero centigrade is thirty-two Fahrenheit. What? Minus, so if you go so on that below, minus twenty yeah. Fahrenheit will be minus twenty-nine centigrade. What? Gosh, my gosh, okay. that that is um, that is something else. I bet your heating bills were were high that week, Rick. Were they? Dear me. Where Where is Rick? What town? Where is Rick's he? in Pittsburgh, USA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, they had, okay. do you remember sure that, they had that polar vortex thing last year, didn't they, over New right, York right. and everywhere? Yeah. yeah. 
I used I used to live in Montreal for a while and it went to minus thirty two there. Oh. So it's pretty cold. When it's that cold you have to have something over your mouth and eyes. Yeah, it's funny it does funny things to it. Freezes the moisture in your nose. Oh. And it freezes oh. freeze your eyelashes and <laughs> and um you know, it is very, very cold. It stings, but it is beautiful weather because yeah. when you go out, of course, it's not. It's too cold for there to be clouds. So you have this brilliant blue sky and bright sunshine. So it's quite beautiful, and the snow is beautiful white on everything, even a filthy town. Yeah. If you blanket in a few inches of pure snow, you've got a beautiful scene: blue sky, white ground, and the buildings contrasting with the white. It makes everything look beautiful. Oh, that does sound really nice, actually. I oh, when I yeah. was when I was doing the jogging, um, there was a particular day because I live quite close to a forest, and there was okay. a particular day that I went over there, and it had been it it had been uh, what do we call freezing fog. Yeah, and every branch, every blade of grass on the trees was just covered in a very thin bit of ice. And it was just Beautiful. listening. Oh, you never seen it. It's, yeah. I love it over the forest. I love it over yeah, there. Yeah. I can walk yeah. over there for five minutes. You know, I'm in a, a large town, although I'm so, kind of outside the town. I have a lot of trees around here, but I can just walk five minutes from my house into that forest and just be surrounded by pine trees in the quiet that, you know, like, I don't know, yeah. how, ever so tall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Doesn't love it. Now, do you get powder snow there? Snow? Powder snow will stack. Powder snow will stack up quite tall on everything, every little twig, and that's beautiful too. No, no, we don't really get that. Don't don't really get the powdered mm. snow. No. There's the thing I liked about Canada was some of the forms of water, the frozen water. I went down to a canal in Montreal. There's a canal called the Saint Lawrence Canal, which you've probably heard of. Yes, I have. And um, I went. I was walking down there in the in the um, in the for in the autumn, uh, sorry, in the springtime, yeah. and I heard this clinking sound. I didn't, it sounded like glasses clinking, <laughs> and it was just thousands of just clinking. And I was, and you know what had happened? The canal had been covered with about maybe six, three, four to six inches of ice. Yes, and for some reason, it had fractured into little vertical pencils, and they were all joggling shoulder to shoulder against each other and oh, tinkling, like those little glasses. Like, like those glass things you can yeah. get to hang outside the door. Yeah, right. Just beautiful. Wow. So you know, I mean, there's snow of all form. It was it was cold though. When yeah. I first experienced the cold, and the first time I arrived there, I'd married a Canadian woman, and um, when I first got there, I'd never experienced minus about minus ten, minus fifteen, and I was wearing this very good bomber jacket. It was made of uh, quite thick wool. Yes. But the the cold air came through that like petrol going through your clothes. Oh, you ever spilled petrol on your clothes? No, no. And I felt I felt that go through that jacket, and I thought, wow, I'd never felt that cold before. No. It just went right through that jacket. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the cold weather. I don't understand these people that want to go skiing and snowboarding and all that. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I tried. Can you ski or anything like that? Not well. No, I tried I it. I tried it once. So I tried it for a couple of hours, and then I gave up. <laughs> How do you spend your time other than DJing? What do you do in the forest? Um, I go swimming most mornings. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I go swimming. Uh, there's a little pool up there. It's not a full size pool, but up to about sixty lengths. Um, I walk there and back to keep fit. I do these things and writing, uh, sorry, preparing the quiz and uh, the music for the DJ and getting new karaoke. That that takes a lot of time, really. Uh, yeah, my best right. friend look, live, lives just up the road. We spend some time with him. I've been doing a lot of shopping this week, ready for Christmas, and um, a, a, and that's it, really. Yeah, yeah. I have quite a nice. How, how, yeah. how, I'm trying to get speed in my swimming. I can I can swim a total of. The longest I've ever swum was two kilometres. Right. But I'm, a, I'm not a natural swimmer. I can swim a kilometre in 40 minutes. It takes me 40 minutes to a kilometre. Right. But I never really figured out how to go faster. Um, if you do 60 lengths, how long does it take you to do those 60 lengths? About 40 minutes. That'd be 25 metres each, right? 
about 40 minutes. Uh, the, the, I think the pool is about 15 metres long, so it's not a massive pool. Oh, it's 15, OK. okay. 15. Oh, no, what did he say? He did tell me that it might be 17 and a half. I can't remember now. But, yeah, it, it's, it's nowhere near a full-size pool. But it takes about 40 minutes to do 60 lengths in there, yeah. And it's, it's never cold. It's never, ever right. cold in there. That's what I like about that particular pool. Yeah. It makes a lot of difference, all right? Do you go swimming very often? Is there, like, a public one near you or something? There is. I, I go once a week, just just because it's an excellent way of exercising. Yes. And it's also a good survival skill Yeah. to be able to fall in water and be able to swim. Right. It's really good. And and it's, I think it's great for breathing, too. I think yeah. breathing has quite a lot of effect on yeah, your life. I have, I, I have a bit of asthma. And um, if I go in there, when I come out, the asthma's gone. It's gone. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And the same, maybe I've got a bit of a cough because I'm a bit susceptible to chest infections. If I've got something yeah. and it's, you know, <coughs> like that all the time, by the time I've come yeah. out, it will stop for a few hours. So it must must be good. It must be. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm I'm similar to you. I When I was a kid, I had asthma and my both my parents had bronchitis and asthma mm. and all kinds of stuff. And I've kept fit. I've done exercise for years and I'm mostly okay. But yeah. there's always a possibility of a tickle in the chest, you know? Yeah. The doctor tells me that the the asthma is due to the pine trees that are around me. He, he, he could be. It. Do you yeah. think so? Yeah, it could be. It could be the it could be chemicals. You could look that up on the web, but I'm not that surprised. It could be, um, for example, one thing I would suggest, without knowing, yes. is that mildew coming out of the the floor, the forest floor, yeah, yeah. that that really will get your lungs going. Well, well, when I was in Canada, well, go ahead. Yeah. You there? Yeah, sorry, I thought I lost you. Then, yeah, go on, you were saying? I was saying, when I was in Canada, yeah. I somehow got ten I got involved with air quality because the cars produce nitrous oxide and the diesel trucks oh, in yes, particular. Yeah. <laughs> and I started doing digging around. I did a lot of research. And one, I read an article about a woman in Saskatchewan, and she'd found that mil, uh, that the mildew, the spores from the mildew, that's the little seeds from the mildew and mold, they are very allergenic. Mm. And she uh, she got some 3M uh, surgical masks that'll take the filtering down to half a micron, yeah. put them onto her family's faces, and bingo, within minutes, they would stop getting that reaction. Really? So you mm. might like to try getting some surgical masks 3M is the brand, yeah. or any brand, takes down to half a micron or less and filter out any spores that are coming from the forest floor. All those pine needles, they rot. <coughs> they rot, And um, I think that might affect your lungs. It tickles your lungs. Ah. Well, because I, I, I didn't have it until I moved out here. Well, I was living in London in a place called Wandsworth. That's, that's, yeah. There's a lot of buildings, not much grass and trees around there. I never had it yeah. there. It's only since right. I've lived here. Um, yeah. I also have a lot. We have a lot of. I've got a lot of ferns growing all around me as well, and they chuck out the spores, okay. don't they? Mm. I would think so too. Yeah. 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 One way to test it is just get hold. Go to a either an industrial supplies place or just a pharmacy and yeah. say, "Have you got some really good surgical masks?" Yeah. And then when you've got some some irritation in your lungs, put it on for half an hour. See if it makes it better. That's a good idea. I might dig out some of those somewhere, Bruce. Yeah. Another thing is just relax, you know, relaxation breathing. I think yeah. that because I think that the allergic reaction that we're talking about is partly a psychological thing as well. Right. And if you calm yourself down, your physiology changes. And Agreed. I think you're more able to cope. Ag yeah, totally know? agree with that. Yes. Um, I think once you think you've got a problem, you can make it worse yourself. Right. I, 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 I do agree I'm with that, to, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think what that chemical, it's not histamine, there's, a, there's another chemical in your blood, it's one of those peptides in your blood, it's a reaction, it's the inflammation chemical. Right. It's, uh, I'll think of it in a minute. Not quite sure what that is. I, read, I recently read a book called Molecules of Emotion by yeah. Candice Pert, she's a yeah. doctor, and um, I read a lot about how a lot of our, well, all, all of our sentiments and emotions are actually represented in our yeah. body as molecules. In other words, they're floating around in our bloodstream. Mm. And we do have some control over those if we want to, you know. 
Well, well, Bruce, it's been lovely talking to you. Good. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, good I've really call. thank you so much for, for calling in and, and especially as you were on the telephones as well. You know, it was nice to be able to, to talk about that with someone else who's, who's been into the same sort of thing. Yeah, right. Well, right. of course, you were inside okay, okay. it. You were in the warm and I was out in the cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Have a lovely day, time. Bruce. Thank you very much. Bye bye, sir. Bye. There we are. How lovely. What a lovely man. A nice old conversation there. That's what it's all about. People calling in and having a little bit of a chat. Maybe you'll do the same next week. Uh, just a couple more messages. Um, Rick says, the hotels in Pittsburgh, when it was that cold, were allowing the homeless to stay for free those nights. It was amazing to see how we all uh, took care of each other. Yeah, I, I mean, I just can't imagine that. Um, oh, it's so cold. I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like the cold like that. No, I, I, I go to sunny climates when I'm on holiday. And uh, finally, Daniel, who was very late this morning, says, what made you change your mind and get the boiler? Because you were going to stick um, with what you've got. And, and I, indeed, I was. Um, I wasn't going to bother um, upgrading it. Um what it was, Daniel, I, I, the two radiators needed to be replaced anyway, right? So I wanted that done. And I thought about having the system cleaned out because that's never been done. So I wanted that done. And I wanted a thermostat in the living room because I don't have an, a, a thermostat anywhere. All I have is the little thermostats on the radiator. And I wanted that put in because the bloke told me if you haven't got one of those thermostats in the living room, the whole system doesn't shut down. Okay? So although you've got the thermostats on the radiator, the pump is still pushing the water up to the valves. Right? Whereas if you have a thermostat in the living room, you get to that temperature, it shuts off. So that's, that's the reason why. Um, and I wanted the system cleaned out. And then I went back to the guys and I told them, right, well, I still want this, this and this done. Um, he said, OK. He said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll send a bloke round again. So the bloke came round again. And he was all up for this. You know, he said, OK. And, and he gave me the price for all those other things except the boiler. With the boiler removed, in the grand scheme of things... I looked at it and I thought, well, mm, I've saved quite a lot of money not having a boiler. He said, he said, it's up to you what you do. He said, but if you're having all this done, he said, I personally would have the boiler done as well at the same time because that, that's your old part of the system then, you see what I mean? And that's the reason why I had it done. Um, I do hardly ever use it. Yeah, you, you are quite right. But if it's a lot more efficient than the one I've got now, perhaps I'll use it a little bit more. You know what I mean, Daniel? Anyway, that's it today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining us for the show today. A lot of people late today. Where were you earlier? We're sitting here talking to about two people until about half past 12. Do try and get here on. Is the show too early for you? Are you still in bed at this time of day? Or has someone switched on eight devices in the hope that it would make the numbers look better? I wonder, Ronnie. Uh, don't forget you can join me for my daily little uh, recorded video shows. You'll find that at the main United Kingdom Talk website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. There's all the stuff there, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And if you want to send us in a little email for next week, please feel free to do so. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.